Spoofing isn't acceptable. No other game has ever had this controversy, and I don't understand. I don't see any valid reason to spoof because it doesn't seem like a whole lot of fun to me. The game, you know, is called Pokemon Go, which you're supposed to go out of your house physically yes. to actually play the game. It's not like Call of Duty that you play on your PlayStation at home. This is a game that requires you to go out and interact with the real world. GPS spoofing is the most prominent form of cheating in Pokemon Go. Imagine running your first marathon, and let's say finishing a marathon is something you've always wanted to do. You train really hard for months, you put in all of this work into it, and you are ready to finish your first marathon. Now at the start of the marathon, a couple of other runners hop in a taxi, tells the driver the location of the finish line, the driver takes them there, and the runners get out of the car and then cross the finish line. Now you would think to yourself, hey, these people clearly cheated, so of course their placement wouldn't count. They didn't put the work into it, they didn't do any running whatsoever, so no one would give them the recognition of having finished a marathon, right? But that is precisely what ends up happening. These runners, even though they did absolutely no work, ended up with the same results as you, who did do the work. Of course, you as a runner running this marathon feel cheated, even though their results have nothing to do with yours. I mean, as long as you cross the finish line yourself, you can still tell people that you finished a marathon. But the fact that others in the marathon cheated but still got recognized essentially makes you feel less about your own accomplishment. Well, that is precisely what is happening on a daily basis in Pokemon Go. For a vast majority of players, GPS spoofers have always been a thorn in their side. Pretty much since the very beginning of the game, much to the chagrin of legit players, spoofing has been a major part of Pokemon Go, with many design choices that Niantic has made along the way being directly influenced by the presence of spoofers. But what is GPS spoofing? How much does it negatively affect the game? And what implications does it have for the future of Pokemon Go? That is precisely what I'm going to be exploring in this video. If you end up enjoying it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if it's your first time here, and don't forget that little bell as well. And yeah, let's get right into it. So GPS spoofing has been a major part of Pokemon Go pretty much since the beginning. Some would argue that the game wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for the robust community of spoofers that populate the game. They would even go so far as to say that a majority of Niantic's revenue comes from spoofers. Many others would argue against that, and the evidence seems to support the latter. But in any case, GPS spoofing has been the one major polarizing aspect of Pokemon Go, with many people on both sides quite often finding themselves at odds with very little room for reconciliation. So what is GPS spoofing? GPS spoofing is the act of faking your location through third-party apps, or a modified version of the game. Regardless of where you are, you can be at any place at any time through GPS spoofing. This allows you to get region-locked Pokemon, engage in raid battles without coordinating with other players or driving out to major cities, or engage with your far-off friends for location-specific gameplay like trading and trainer battles. GPS spoofing essentially takes away the go in Pokemon Go. Rather than walking around and traveling to different locations, you could take your character and pretty much go wherever you want without having to leave your home. Sounds great, right? Well, actually, GPS spoofing comes with a few caveats and risks. For one, Niantic is always doing whatever it takes to combat cheating in all forms, especially GPS spoofing. This means the threat of your account getting banned is always looming over you. At any given moment, all of your progress, all of the money you've spent on raid passes and incubators, and all of the Pokemon that you've caught along the way could be taken away forever. Yeah, they finally got me, guys. First off, guys, if I try to log into my account, this is what it looks like, okay? It says your account has been suspended for violating the term service. Uh, Jono made three accounts and his got all banned as well. But wait a minute, they can't get away with this, right? 
Well, actually, yes, Niantic can get away with this because GPS spoofing is explicitly listed as going against their terms of service. And if you break their terms of service, well, you are giving them the right to terminate your account. There is literally nothing you can do to get your account back if it's terminated for spoofing. It's literally laid out for you in the terms of service. Another issue that GPS spoofers commonly struggle with is finding a Pokemon Go community that will accept you with open arms. It is extremely common that some of the most major communities around the world do not allow spoofers to join them. For those that do, they seldom allow you to engage in community activities such as coordinated raids and community days. The reason for this is because most active Pokemon Go players do see GPS spoofing as the most egregious form of cheating within the game. Most players strongly dislike the idea of someone having just as good of a collection as theirs by exerting little to no effort as a result of spoofing. For as long as GPS spoofing has existed, so has the negative stigma surrounding it. In my home city of Chicago, there are two very major discords and over a dozen smaller discords that exist. In one of those major discords, spoofing is absolutely not allowed, and any evidence of spoofing will get you completely removed and essentially excommunicated from the members of the group with no questions asked. In the other major discord, spoofers are allowed to join and be a part of the community, however, very strict limitations are placed for spoofers in that group. So with all of these hardships, why would anyone spoof to begin with? I mean, where did spoofing originate, and why did players flock to it once it arrived? The history of GPS spoofing can be traced back to the start of the game itself and the incomplete nature of Pokemon Go and its launch state. GPS spoofing is something that existed prior to Pokemon Go. Very often you will find app developers, government officials, or even regular old Ingress players spoofing their location on their mobile devices. In other words, this was not something that was new at the time of Pokemon Go's release. In fact, this is something Niantic was probably utilizing themselves while developing the game, and with prior history of GPS spoofers in Ingress, they were definitely aware of it. Speaking of Ingress, Niantic had a very strong history of sniffing out spoofers and dropping the ban hammer quickly with Ingress prior to Pokemon Go's release. However, because of the myriad of server issues, lack of game content, and overall stability of Pokemon Go at the time of its release, dealing with spoofers had to take a back seat. Because of this, GPS spoofing ran absolutely rampant on Pokemon Go. As more and more players were finding out about this method of play, and Niantic was doing very little to stop it simply because they already had a lot on their plate. What ended up happening was this mindset and culture among spoofers that they really could get away with spoofing and that Niantic was secretly okay with them spoofing so long as they were spending money. Many spoofers perceived Niantic's inaction as them being okay with spoofing and that they were free to spoof to their leisure because they could essentially get away with it, even though it was technically cheating and breaking the terms of service and it was taking away the intended core gameplay experience from them. Niantic wasn't okay with spoofing, however, and this was all brought to a head in August of 2016, just a month after the game's launch. At this time, several players were starting to see an error message appear on their screen every time they logged in that said, failed to get game data from the server. At a glance, this looked a lot like the server issues that was continuously plaguing the game around this time. However, it would later be confirmed that this was in fact Niantic's first true ban wave. Niantic would then take the next step in the fight against spoofing by preventing any rooted devices from being able to play the game. This is, of course, because some GPS spoofing apps at the time required your phone to be rooted. This was extremely controversial, however, as several players who do not spoof had rooted devices for whatever various unrelated reasons. Thus, it felt like legit players were being punished by the actions of a few bad eggs. From here on out, it would seem like Niantic went radio silent on the issue of spoofing. For several months, no ban wave or no update was ever released for Pokemon Go that specifically addressed spoofing. However, Niantic would make a big splash in the fight against spoofing once again, with major ban waves one after another in the year of 2017. This all culminated in a spoof at your own risk mentality that began to brew in the spoofing communities. Now the risk of having your collection of Pokemon and progress being permanently removed was present. And this would persist to this 
this day. There were irregular big band waves and there was a constant communication from Niantic on what their stance was on this particular method of play. Their transparency on spoofing would ultimately lead to the reveal of the three strike system, which Niantic implemented to give players a chance to turn away from spoofing and cheating methods, while also reserving the right to outright ban you without giving you any chances. It became crystal clear that Niantic was not okay with spoofing as previously perceived, and that they were exerting as much effort as possible to combat it. But in spite of all the risks and the troubled history, people still choose to GPS spoof for a number of reasons, some of which I cannot argue with. Pokemon Go is a very limited and a bit of an exclusive game, which caters to very specific demographics. For example, players in urban areas will have a much better experience with Pokemon Go compared to players who live in rural areas and small towns. This is one of the biggest reasons why players spoof. For players who live in these low populated areas, they simply cannot enjoy the game as much as others who live in heavily populated areas unless they move their character to those areas. And another big reason why players spoof is because they are physically incapable of walking or traveling. Spoofing is essentially the only option to play this game for bedridden people who really want to enjoy the game. Whatever the reason may be, players choose to GPS spoof and play the game in a way that was never intended. This form of gameplay will always be polarizing within the Pokemon Go community, which is unfortunate in my opinion. I think the overarching issues that gives players a reason to spoof need to be addressed. Rather than bickering and fighting over spoofing and its place in Pokemon Go, I really think what we should be discussing is proper solutions to the rural problem and plenty of other problems that results in players wanting to spoof. I mean, there are so many more ways Pokemon Go could improve in these areas, but without user input, Niantic will not know the best course of action for making their game spoof free, aside from just the continuous ban waves. And look, just like I said before, even if Niantic were to continuously ban spoofers, there will still be more spoofers that will end up spoofing. It's kind of like trying to fight a Hydra. No matter how many heads you cut off, two more will grow in its place. I really think what Niantic should focus on is the core issues, not necessarily spoofing itself. Spoofing will always be a mainstay of Pokemon Go. It's kind of unfortunate for legit players, but if Niantic really wants to take spoofing head on, what they really need to do is address a lot of these issues that are giving players a reason to spoof. For rural players especially, I really think they deserve more. For people who are bedridden and people who cannot go out and travel, there needs to be options of gameplay for these players as well. And I really think Niantic is on the right track, they're on the right step, but I really think they need to crank it up and do a lot more. For the longest time, I was super annoyed by spoofers and I really wish they had no part in this game. But after a while, I kind of just started ignoring them. As long as they do not take down my gyms that I work really hard for, I really think spoofers really do not affect my gameplay at all. And I really think for a lot of legit players, this is something that we could all share in. But along those lines, spoofers definitely can negatively affect legit players, especially when it comes to gym battles. So I really think spoofers have to be careful where they tread as they spoof. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video and this is all I have to say about GPS spoofing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you GPS spoof for a specific reason or are you completely against spoofing? Let's have a great discussion. And as always, if you end up enjoying Enjoying this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if it's your first time here, and don't forget that little bell as well. Check out the links in the description below for more cool stuff. I am Count Jinsula, and I'll catch you all later.